Hey everybody, this is Jace with RMUS, and in this video we're bringing you a comparison of the H20N and the H20T. Now, both of these payloads look very similar, but they're actually very different, and each one brings different strengths that are suited for different scenarios. Our goal in this video is to give you the information that you need to make an informed decision about which payload you want to purchase for your particular operation. First, let's take a look at the specs of each payload. Starting with the RGB sensors, each payload features a wide as well as a zoom sensor. The H20T features a 20 megapixel zoom sensor with a 23 times hybrid optical zoom and up to a 200 times digital zoom and 4K recording at up to 30 frames per second. The H20N zoom is a 4 megapixel sensor with a 20 times hybrid optical zoom up to a 128 times digital zoom and recording to what could be called 2.7K resolution at up to 30 frames per second. However, when night scene is enabled, the zoom sensor maxes out at 1080p at 15 frames per second. The H20T wide camera is a 12 megapixel, whereas the H20N is a 2 megapixel sensor for stills. The wide cameras on both the H20N and H20T have a maximum video recording resolution of 1080p at 30 frames per second. Onto the thermal sensors, the H20T features one sensor at 640 by 512 resolution, 30 hertz, and a 13.5 millimeter lens, and up to an eight times digital zoom. The H20N features two thermal cameras, both at 640 by 512 resolution and 30 hertz. The wide sensor is a 12 millimeter lens, while the telephoto thermal sensor is a 44.5 millimeter lens. The combination of these sensors allows for an up to 32 times digital zoom. As you can see, there are many differences between these two payloads. Some people may ask why the sacrifice in megapixels for the H20N? The answer has to do with camera anatomy and how digital sensors work. The short answer is, the fewer pixels are in a given sensor area, the larger those pixels are, they can bring in more light and that results in a brighter image. Bearing in mind that the H20N is geared specifically for low light and nighttime operations, again, the sacrifice makes sense. Now that we have a basic comparison and overview of these two payloads, we're going to put them in the air, capture some images, take them back to the office, and compare them side by side. Okay, so now that we have returned from the field, we also took some additional shots uh, here at our shop. And I actually think these are going to be a better representation of what we did. But here are some of our example shots that we've gotten from the H20T and the H20N. For reference, the H20T is on the left side and the H20N is on the right side. Now, again, these have a little bit different focal lengths and stuff like that. But what we've tried to do is basically take these photos at, as close to an equivalent um, as is possible. So the framing of these might be just a little bit different, but we've taken them as close as we can. The other thing we've done with this is taken these photos as a comparison um, almost every single photo that you'll see here is in its optical zoom uh, format. We didn't want to get into the, into the digital because when you get into digital, you know, you're looking at additional processing and that kind of thing, and it can kind of artificially skew what you're looking at with your image. So again, we wanted to stay mostly in the optical uh, zoom area so that you could really make a compar fair comparison about what these sensors are and what they're capable of. So again, just looking at these images straight side by side, at, at first glance, I actually think they look fairly similar. But when you start getting into more of that closer detail, specifically if you look at these trees, and if you look, I think the grass is probably one of those areas where you can 
really tell the difference between the resolutions again this is the zoom sensor which is 4 megapixels with the N on the right side and the 20 megapixel sensor on the left with the H20T but again I, th I think this grass really shows you a very big difference on what you can see in capturing the level of detail that we're seeing here on the H20T versus the H20N and then going a little bit farther than that if we zoom into here little bit closer onto these. I'm going to try and get them at a pretty close to the same zoom, the same uh, throw here. So again, I mean, I'm just zooming in and, and zooming in on these really artificially, but you can see the differences that the resolution actually makes. Again, look at the difference in the detail of this grass, um, of these weeds and this grass growing in, uh, in this area. The other thing that I, I the other two things that really jump out to me in this image is this detail on the top of these right here. I think this is obviously a much, uh, much sharper detail here. And really the big thing that you'll notice, probably the first thing you noticed is the text. Obviously, you know, the text right here in an inspection scenario, I wouldn't even be able to read this text, at least not not to where I would be 100% sure of what I'm reading. Obviously, this right here is very easy to read. Again, noting that we're in straight up uh, in the optical zoom portion of this, not any, not any type of digital zoom here. Um, so moving on to the next images. We're going to get to the equivalent image right here. So again, we tried to frame these fairly close, but if you look, we'll zoom in here versus right here. I think this is part of what makes one of the, or where you can see the detail in this uh, in its most stark detail. You can obviously see the definition that we have on this particular unit. The other thing we're noticing right here, the spider web. I can see that clearly on this H20T image. I cannot see that. I mean, I wouldn't be able to determine something like that. Um, on this image at all, uh, especially not if I knew that it was there. But you can obviously see the difference in the in the the uh, resolution, in the contrast, in the color representation, and just the overall sharpness of the image. We're getting so much more definition uh, via the H20T image versus the N. You know, other things to call attention to that you can see right here. I'm noticing the th the individual threads of this bolt that I can see here versus the one on the H20T. Again, it's fairly obvious. I can't actually see those individual threads with the, uh, the image from the H20N. The other kind of thing I notice right here is if we go up to kind of this uh, kind of eyelet right here, if I zoom up, come up here in the equivalent area right here. Again, very close, but I'm noticing Again, aside from the resolution and the detail, I think I believe that the the color representation on the H20T is probably a little more accurate, a little more true to life. Um, that's just something that I kind of observed and kind of noticed. I, I think the color representation here is more accurate. The other thing, you know, kind of again on the surface, just completely white, is look at the uh, definition that we see here on the telephone pole, the the or not the telephone pole, but the power line pole itself. I think that uh, this obviously speaks to some of that difference. One of the other things that we noticed is if we zoom in on this portion right here. This is another part of that detail that we noticed. I think that obviously here we're seeing, you know, this looks much more obvious as far as the depth of the crack or whatever would happen to be uh, this right here uh, than in the end image. Again, just more definition um, that you're gonna see. And that should be, I mean, we're talking 20 megapixels versus four. Um, it is what we would expect to see um, out of these images. One of the other things I think to call attention to a little bit here, um, when you start to get into these kind of low light scenarios that you see right here, um, you know, again, more pixels, more color definition, and just, uh, you know, a little bit more of a dynamic range that you get with this image. So we can see some more of the detail in the underside of this. This is something that would be in shadow. I mean, we can obviously tell that these are two separate components, um, you know, as opposed to this kind of bled together. Um, you know, so again, just more of those, that kind of image, the contrast between those two images. So if we continue, we're going to push into this other image. We showed this particularly for our kind of law enforcement friends here. Um, again, on, on the surface, I think these, these two images kind of look, 
you know, look fairly equivalent. Maybe you'll see a little bit more detail in the trees. I mean, and this looks, this still looks very good. Um, but what you'll see, if we zoom in on this license plate right here, you know, there's some of your different, your difference right there. Um, you know, yeah, we can still get something that's usable out of this. Maybe not with quite as much, as much assure, surety um, as maybe we get here, but you know, Again, and obviously the H20N is still an extremely respectable payload, especially when we're talking at the kind of distances that we were looking at here. But that's just another one of those examples that you can see of where that higher megapixel count makes a difference. And finally, we'll punch into our last one. Again, remembering that those we're still in optical zoom territory with, with both of these sensors currently. So let's get into, this is where we get into the digital digital zoom area. So again, we tried to keep these mostly optical, just wanted to show you at least some difference, make these equivalent. I mean, um, again, maybe the bias in me just a little bit. I'm looking at this. I think that this image looks a little bit better. Um, and I mean, if, if we keep zooming in to really... I mean, we're in digital zoom and I'm artificially zooming it here, so you wouldn't expect a whole lot out of each of these images, but it just seems to me there's a little bit more that you can see here. The other thing I noticed on these images is, you know, very, again, very nitpicky, um, but, you know, I can see, I, I feel like I get a little more detail in these, uh, in these objects right here in this H20T image versus the H20N. Um, now I just feel like I get a little bit more out of that. Uh, out of that particular image. So again, um, you know, this is our kind of comparison of the images just straight side by side um, and just kind of hopefully giving us a really good idea of what to expect, what that higher, higher resolution and the megapixels um, actually means to when the rubber meets the road. So now that we've seen these sensors and the images they captured in the day, we're gonna go back out to the flight field at night and compare the nighttime performance of these sensors so you can see what that looks like. All right, so now that we've seen our images from the day, we're gonna put these sensors up against each other at night. We actually kind of picked a perfect night out here. This is not a full moon. I mean, we have a small sliver and we're actually augmenting the lighting off of a car because it is really very dark out here. We're not really in a populated area. So this should be a perfect opportunity to see this H20N and what it can do. Really what we're gonna look at is a couple things. We're gonna look at the starlight and put these in the air at the same time so that we can see exactly the comparison between the two at the same time. On that note, we do have both of these on the M300 at the same time and they're both on the bottom mount. The trick is, and this is a disclaimer for anybody who is potentially thinking of doing this, I'd when we are going to exercise extreme caution while doing this. Both of these gimbal sensors, or gimbals rather, are fairly wide. In fact, when we put them on the aircraft, we put one on, let it do its calibration, and then put the other one at, on after that. If you turn these too far one, way, one direction or the other, they will collide in the center. So if you're looking at this type of operation, at the very least, exercise extreme caution. And in our example, we're actually not going to pan the cameras left and right. We're strictly going to keep them straight and tilt them. And again, if you were going to do an operation like this, my recommendation at the very least, at the very least would be to keep one of the cameras pointing straight forward. And if you had to pan and tilt at the same time, I would only pan and tilt one camera at once. So again, let's get, we've got both of these ready. We've got the aircraft fired up. Let's get it up in the air and see what they can do. Okay, so now we have the aircraft up in the air and we also have a subject that's out in the field that we're flying at right now. So initially what you're seeing is I've got these two remote screen caps, what we're seeing is the screen cap, side by side. Now, neither, currently neither of these cameras are set to their night mode. So this is what you get just straight RGB, which we can see is noisy and pretty messy. So. We're going to go into the menu, go into our setting, and enable the night scene on both of these sensors. And this is where we're going to start seeing that fairly stark contrast 
in what these are capable of. You can see, again, both of the night scenes are enabled on this aircraft, right, on these payloads right now. So as we can see here, again, we're seeing a fairly stark difference between these two. The other thing that we want to call attention to is the infrared mode. Again, we had mentioned that we'd wanted to talk about the two thermal sensors and zooming those two together. So what I have this set as now is, let's flip over to IR mode. So as you can see, these are both in their complete wide view. Fair, I mean, both look fairly comparable. Same viewing mode, these look nearly identical to me. Right now, let's go uh, to bump your zoom one. So what, one thing you'll see is that on the H20T, he is set to 2x zoom and mine is set to four. Focal lengths vary just a little bit, but my four and his two are basically equivalent. So let's zoom in to eight. This is where we're starting to see the big difference with these two, the combination of these two thermal sensors working together to create a sharper image. If we go even farther, so that's your, is it eight is the maximum for the H20T? Yep, I'm there. Correct. And that's my 16. I'm gonna bump, tilt up just a little bit. Again, it goes without saying, we can see the stark contrast between these two images. Additionally, I've got 32 up to a 32x zoom. So currently, the H20T is maxed out at zoom. And I have a whole additional zoom level to go beyond the H20T. And again, if we were to zoom these in artificially, I think the difference between these two images is fairly obvious. The other thing that I wanted to call attention to is the H20M has the option to link the zooms together. So I'm at 32x zoom. On the H20T, it doesn't have that option to link those zooms, which means if we switch to zoom, let's, let's both switch to our zoom camera now. You can see that the H20T is still set to its widest zoom throw. But because this is synced on the H20N, my zoom on my infrared, my thermal payload, and my RGB zoom payload are synced together. If I zoom out, that's zooming out on my RGB. If I switch back to my IR, you can see how close these images are switching back and forth because they both zoom together. I'm going to go out one more. Again, you can see the image parity between these two. When I go in, that's zoom in. You can see the IR zooms with it. If I zoom out, RGB zooms with it. Once again, we'll go even wider, 4X. You can see it zooming out there. When I switch to IR, I'm back out to a wider view. So that's one of the other additional nice features with the H20N. Really like this, this parity in the image that you're viewing between your zoom throws. It's gonna eliminate some of that, some of that uh, zoom time, the flipping back and forth. Anybody who's operated the, these payloads understands how frustrating it can be to switch from one payload to the other and have to find your zoom throw again. So that's one of those features that we really appreciate. On that note though, I can press and hold on the center of the zoom control and unlink those two. So now, if I wanted to, I can zoom independently from each of those payloads. Hopefully this gives you a better idea of what to expect from each of these payloads. Both payloads are great options, but one could be better than the other depending on your operating scenario. If we had to pick specifically for each payload, we'd say the H20T is the better inspection payload and the H20N is the right choice for public safety. As always, for more information, reach out to the team at RMUS for quotes and more information. We hope this video was helpful and thanks for watching.